to the um, Miami Township meeting of October 16, 2023. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Present are all three trustees, our fire chief, our road crew, and citizen Mark Heiss. Um, first order of business, um, we will not be adopting minutes of the last meeting. Um, they will be completed soon. We have some emergencies on staff. Um, I entertain a motion to pay our bills mm -hmm. in the amount of $94,981.06. But don't panic. That includes <laughs> our road and bridges repairs for the year of $60,965.65. General fund, $4,650.16. Fire and rescue, $31,590.08. EMS, that's weird, $391.86. Cemetery roads and bridge, oh, I already said that, $60,965. And Grinnell Mill, $12.48. I don't even want to know what happened at the Grinnell Mill for $12.48. It's no. a photo eye for the light. She didn't want to know. Well, it was I, a, couldn't, a, I couldn't keep it in. Some kind of light? <laughs> the photo eye. Photo eye for the light. Okay. Um, we had some correspondence. Yeah. YSDC sent us minutes. Wait, how about our motion? Oh, motion to pay our bills. Thank you. I so move. I'll second. Hearing um, no further discussion, may we vote? Hollister. Yes. Future. Yes. And Miss Moyer. Yes. Um, How come you got a Miss Moyer and I got a Nutra? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was raised that, this, seriously, that as a Quaker, you don't use titles like Mr. and Miss. Or Madam so Chair. If, you would use the title Madam Chair? I wouldn't even say Madam. So these are microaggressions. <laughs> Toward Quakers. Okay. Yeah. I was raised that unless you're president or you're in the army, you're addressed by your <coughs> surname. Or your, what is that? Yeah, sir. What is Mr. or Mrs.? Anyway, I introduced a topic that is not miss. on the right. agenda. So. And we're not having a victim Olympics tonight. So give a vote. <laughs> we're going to, microaggressions aside, we're going to continue. We received um, the YSDC minutes, um, the pipeline newsletter from the Green County Sanitation Department. Nicole Hawk requested a tour of the Oak Grove Cemetery, and I saw that you took care of that. And ongoing Linda Bankston looking for contract. Lee Sloan, confidential update of the Kingwood Solar Development. Green County Township Association invite to the October dinner meeting. Ohio Department of Treasury, Treasury Slurf Funds, um, which I believe are the, is the um, ARPA. ARPA money. Um, no action required. But Frank Hatfield report, a riveting report that I found very interesting. The township's role in, in indigent burials. Um, NVRPC annual report. Marilyn Moyer urging BC, BZA and Zoning Commission members to attend the regional planning trainings on planning topics. Keith Faber, Ohio Auditor, Memorandum of Agreement for our Audit and Home Inc. Public notification on launching the Cascades Phase 1. Is that the name of the development? The Cascades, I believe. That's what I'm taking from there. Um, and they have big machinery out there, so it's, they must have gotten some funding. Mm -hmm. And. Um, we have a member of the public who is also the president of the Chamber of Commerce who has two items for us tonight. Could we finish correspondence? Oh, yes. Okay. okay. I had one piece of correspondence. And I, have that two, I, I have three more, too. Excuse came me. Came in late. Okay. Well, it didn't come in late, but um, this was an uh, inquiry from Kelly Patron uh, regarding further follow up from Richard Zoff, and she had sent three requests. The only re well, one reason I bring that up is. Didn't Richard say the last time he was here that he was having trouble accessing his email? Did that get? It was temporarily resolved. I'm waiting for a 
little fancy key file thing that comes oh, in that'll right. give him his numbers, it's not. So potentially she's, he's not getting it. Yeah, that's what I, I talked to him today, I ran into him in person, oh. and he, he hasn't received emails for the last three weeks. So. Yeah, I asked him to bring his laptop in too, and I would help him with that, but he hasn't brought it okay. So, yeah, she was inquiring about, no, that's not important. He'll take care of it, I'm sure. Um, so I, t I, Margaret forwarded to the, his other, his previous Gmail, and he's going to get back to her. Okay, thank you. Until we resolve that issue. And I did write down, there were three more emails that came in. Um, Sherry Baird from Claremont County would like a copy of our moratorium on solar. I can follow up on that. What's that? I can follow up if, if you okay. have. If you'd like to, I have a copy of it. She's asking for a copy of ours. Well, I'll let you do it then. Okay, no problem. And that's it. Any more correspondence? Not I. Okay. Mark Heiss, you have the floor. <clears throat> so two things. First of all, as I got a piece of correspondence at the chamber today, which was rather fortuitous given the timing, um, but apparently, um, Yellow Spring Street Fair has been named the, we, were, we came in second under the best of Dayton to the to Oktoberfest, and we didn't even know we had been nominated, so that means we didn't even promote it, so that's kind of pretty cool that we came in second. And I want to thank Denny and his team because they are a part of that and brings the uh, flavor of the township into the event, and we appreciate that very, very much. That's nice. Mm -hmm. The second is a follow-up from my comments in the last meeting. Um, I did follow up, and I'm, I'm guessing that as I'm getting up in age, I know my memory fails me a bit, and I'm guessing Richard's did as well, but I did uh, clarify um, how it came about that we were required to have a permit. And it was not that um, Sarah asked, it was that Richard last year went to Michelle and told her from this point forward, you will need a permit, which again begs the question, why did that all of a sudden happen? Now? Because nothing has changed except for who was actually operating the, the visiting station um, for decades. And so I'd just like to put that out there, that, that, that I have that, that I still have that question, is, is why the enforcement of that, the request of having a permit changed because the, the sale of anything, nothing changed. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, last year we didn't sell any t-shirts where it's come to land for us to for years. Um, so. Again, that would be a question to be answered by Mr. Zoff. I understand that, mm -hmm. but um, this is, I, I'm, I'm, Mr. Zoff is not here at every meeting, and I wanted to bring, I wanted to bring this as timely as I possibly could okay. to the attention of the trustees. Very good. And even though agritourism, we don't have jurisdiction over it. Everyone who wants to do agritourism has to do a permit for parking, setbacks, etc. Correct? Is that correct? It has to be screened anyway. It's screened, screened, yeah. Screened. And this one was a temporary use, but that's that's for a different reason. We straightened that out last time. Okay. Thank you. But again, the, the better part of it is thank you. To the, to the trustees in the township and <coughs> especially Danny and his team. It's pretty neat. And I, and I do appreciate the fact, I know you, there was a question as to whether you were going to have the bike patrols out, but they were. Mm -hmm. So yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, the weather held off. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have too many heat related. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 Actually, I don't, think there, I don't think there were any incidents, were there? Uh, we only had one call during street fair, and that was unrelated to street fair. Oh, good. That's lucky. Is the weather? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> fire department report. So we had uh, 23 MS calls in the previous period, uh, three fire specific, and we had three. Mutual aid calls where we requested aid for EMS calls, none, none that were fire related. Uh, as I mentioned, street fair was very relaxed for us. Um, we just had one call uh, early in the morning uh, that was completely unrelated to street fair. But obviously, the weather uh, dampened things down a little bit. So, uh, Medicaid 2 has an oil leak that I'm going to have to 
uh, pull out of service and, and send off to get checked on that. I can't figure out exactly where it is, so that's going to be kind of a pain. Um, Halloween stuff, we've got our candy purchase to distribute on Halloween, depending on how the weather and that all all holds out. Um, I cut I cut the expenditure down about 30% from what we have done in years past. Um, so it's about, I think it was like $450 in candy as opposed to about last year, I think it was closer to 700. So um, just trying to make that at least still get the PR for it. Uh, we have made the switch to the new scheduling software that happened on the seventh. So it'll, it'll be in effect for this first pay period. Um, but so far it's going okay. Just a few little minor tweaks that we've had to make in terms of configuring and some of that kind of stuff. And now we're just kind of in the learning curve phase, but so far it's, it's, uh, it's not doing too badly. Um, and notification stuff, we're getting people signed up quicker when we've had somebody call off and some of that, which was one of the additional benefits for this. The old system didn't do a very good job with that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's all I got. It was a pretty nice last two weeks for the most part. Good. Yes. Now, I've been used to seeing 30 some EMS in our roughly two week. Yeah, this this one, this <coughs> period was down a little bit. The other one was down mostly because we had called, we had called so much mutual aid. I forget what the numbers were for the previous one, but if you go back to report from last week, we had an ungodly number, because we had so many calls that were either back to back or simultaneously. Um, so that decreases the EMS mm -hmm. numbers in that. Um, and we're now now we're starting to pick up the little the little low at the end of the year where typically our EMS numbers will drop down just because as it's getting colder and we have less visitors in town. So that would be my explanation for it for you know, it's interesting. We never hear about fire alarms pulled at Antioch anymore. I mean it used to be regular, I mean really regular. Yeah, we've had um, we're having a few more little oopsies with birch, um, and it's always smoke alarm. Um, we don't get, it's definitely a different group of people who are not pulling fire alarms like they used to do when I was at college, because <laughs> they were, I mean, we are getting alarm poles constantly. And, Maybe there are and cameras now. What's that? Maybe there are cameras now. Yeah, I don't know if they have any in the dorms, but, but it, it's, um, I mean, I agree. It used to be we'd have sometimes three to five yeah, alarm but it was it was the smoking and the cooking. It wasn't necessarily the, the, oh. the pulling oh, alarms. Okay. Yeah, and ours are uh, typically, well, it's, it's kind of funny because as soon as you think about one building, the next one will go off. But um, yeah, compared to what they used to be. Plus, they don't cook very much in, in, those, in those locations anymore. Um, it, honestly, nine times out of ten, it's going to be uh, you're going to have incense that set it off, or other products of incomplete combustion, <laughs> such as something that might be legal in the not near future in Ohio. We, that's that's a common one. It yeah, sets, sure. them, sets them off. I guess we we used to get. A report as it wasn't an actual report, but Colin would always, you know, it seemed to say, oh, we had five, you know, and then yeah. nuisance alarms, and then we were going to, you know, charge them, and yeah. then we couldn't, and then we could. And yeah. I don't know. But then yeah, it, it, is, down. it is completely different now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we had, we had one the other day, but it was um, uh, more, you know, some rooms, the smoke detectors and that are much more likely to have a lot of dust and that's usually what will set them off when you're like well there's nothing here what set it off and you had a bunch of air that came in and it blew the dust off the smoke detector and set it off but it's you know even even those kind of calls are are down substantially 
Do we inspect those buildings regularly? Not necessarily for a lot, but just for the sprinklers and the rest of that stuff. We're not responsible for the sprinkler inspection, although that is partially included in the building inspection. So we're still playing a lot of catch up on our inspections. And I, I would say that this will be when, when uh, our person comes back on for light duty, he's a fire inspector. Mm -hmm. And that will be a big part actually what he does during his light duty to help catch us up mm -hmm. on fire inspections. Because mm -hmm. we're, now we just completed the, uh, an inspection the other day on campus, but it was actually due to a complaint. Mm -hmm. Um, so we specifically went to a building to observe a particular thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we'll start those. But you, you know, the goal is every every commercial structure in the township should be able to be inspected annually. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that is that's the goal. Yeah. But it used to be it was just Colin and I who could do the inspections. Well, now we've got you know three additional yeah. inspectors, yeah. which makes that a lot, a lot easier. Yep. Anything you want to Hawthorne? No. Mm -hmm. No. I uh, figured I would give the marshal's office until this week, so I'll probably call her Tuesday or Wednesday uh, and see where they were. I, you know, there's just all kinds of legal stuff that's really going on right now. Sure. And of course, all that just moves very slowly. So, yeah. Are they doing any demo over there or anything? I don't know. No. No, they're... they're I don't think they are allowed to do anything still yet. Oh. And that's because of some of the legal stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can ask them about Frank Cook or anything. Have you heard from Frank Cook? No. No. No, we should be, I have to double check the calendar, but I think we're probably, I want to say mm, about 50 days out from what I would expect. Mm -hmm. That'll put us about our 90 days. Because the 90 days started, um, I mean, um, remind me of you referring to Frank Cook. The um, fire and a house assessment. Oh, yes. Um, He's the lead agent. And we didn't, I didn't think you, you were in charge of it, and you don't feel responsibility for it. It's his, it, uh, his, his time clock started, um, Memory suits me around August the fourth. Hmm. That's about what I. So it's got to be pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. So I can email and ask him if you want. Or I can. Okay. Either way, it doesn't matter. And remind me, we we, we paid them already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that fifty days out, maybe. Soon. It actually, it should be sooner than that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, it should be sooner than that. Because if, if just the November fourth, yeah, it should be around that November third would be the Friday. Mm -hmm. So actually, it is much sooner than I thought. I'm flying, actually. Yeah. Tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything else for fire? Nope. Um. Yeah, and I haven't. Thank you for the reminder. I haven't logged into the new self scheduling software yet. Like. So I'll give you a report, see if I understand it. I don't I think know. you have trouble understanding it. I don't anticipate that it will. Dan, yes. cemetery report. Okay. Fire? Oh, I asked if there's anybody who wanted to have a fire and any peeps. I'm peeping. Um, I, I ran a few numbers. We talked about doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, on, and I don't know where you are on it, but just where I am roughly. Uh, to date, we've spent almost exactly $800,000 on, on personnel mm -hmm. to this point. Personnel? Uh, Exclusively? Mm -hmm. how, how do you? Well, it's all the different personnel funds. It's okay, the, yeah. Okay. We're looking at 2191. It's the other salaries. It's the Social Security. It's the Medicare. It's the OPNF. Yeah. It's the and medical the hospitalization. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Work yeah. Count. All of those together is just oh, like two bucks under 800000 so I rounded it up. Um, and that's? 20 days and we have 26. If, if we, again, this is rough, but if we add money that we still have budgeted plus money that potentially we're not going to spend on different accounts, for example, we're, we're only 68% in the medical hospitalization, leaving us 39,000 to spend for the rest of the year. We're not gonna spend that whole amount. 
were, were only 35% in repairs and, and maintenance with a $21,000 balance. We're not going to spend that whole amount, et, et cetera, et cetera. There's a few, there's a few more and, and, and different funds too, but that comes up to about $66,000. Now, if you add that to the funds that are yet to spend, that's about 176,000. If you take, hmm? Well, I, I, I'm yet to spend this in payroll. Right, everything. Because if we have 800,000 in payroll so far for 20 payrolls, then we have, that's about 40,000 for payroll. It has been, yes. And so we have six more, I'm getting 240,000 if we if we keep hitting our average, which we didn't because we were very low this time with three months, so. Anyway. Right, we should be not 40 anymore, we should be closer to 30. Okay, so. Uh, and then. So, and then, so if you add the, if you add what the uh, extra is in the EMS billing, um, which uh, altogether, that's roughly 176,000. Take 22%, I just do 22% out there for what we're gonna spend till the end of the year, uh, about 22% left of the year, uh, that's down to 137. Uh, and, and then you add the, I'm sorry, at that point, then you add the extra in the EMS, and that's 257. So we potentially have 257 to get to the end of the year. And that's including our current fund. That our current fund balance of yes. two, one, two, okay. Mm -hmm. So that should get us to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it's going to get us how much into the carryover necessary into the next year, right. that's going to be a good question, but we, we can always ask for which in advance. The goal is the first three months. Right, but the goal is, is to have that first three months at the yeah. end of the year. Yeah. In addition to money for an ambulance, in addition to all the rest of that stuff, but it's good if we don't go into the negative side of that and have to, you know, throw in money from the general fund or the HARPA fund or anything just to get to the end of the year. But it right. looks as though we're going to be there. End of the year is in January or end of the year as in end of March? No, January. And it has some, a little bit. Uh, again, this is just, it's just yeah. rough, you, you know, it's, it's very hard to get that down to the last nickel and, and right. Right. So. But at least it doesn't come up with minus 100. Well, yeah, and then we've done staffing adjustments, and then we also had, um, you know, Collins leaving buyout, and mm -hmm. so it, yeah, it'd be nice if we could not let up and um, the ARPA money could give us a cushion, but we shouldn't, we should try real hard not to max out on this new levy so that we can keep growing and keep putting aside money for our capital investments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's not lose track that. If we, roughly when might the medic be available to fall? Summer-ish, fall-ish? Uh, it would be, I would say, mid-summer of 25. Oh, was that far out? No, oh, I thought we were talking 18 months. No, after. no, it went to three years. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry, it went to three years, yes. And that doesn't include what's going on with the strikes. Because the plant, the chassis will be built out is shut down now because of the strikes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ouch. So that's, that is, uh, it, there's, I just can't imagine that that's not going to impact us in, yeah. in a bad way. Well, that's knows, not good. Who knows but when that gets resolved. But you could if we have a little extra time. But then. you brought that up for a reason. When I, when I said capital funds, you brought. Uh, just that we have to be cognizant. I thought we were on an 18-month schedule, which would have brought us into oh. roughly the middle end of 24, which was not going to be, and that we would have to have this money available. Mm -hmm. And so we would have to start counting our chickens, our eggs, whichever, uh, either from our funds or mm -hmm. potentially if uh, we receive this uh, funding from back from the uh, state auditor. 
or the state yeah. tax commissioner. The ARPA has to be spent by the end of 24. It, it, it has to be allocated, encumbered, allocated yeah. Encumbered. But spent by the end of 25. Okay. So I'm cautiously optimistic. Mm -hmm. That's good news. And let's keep slimming down so we right. can not have any. Because we have lots of other things to do. Yeah. As soon as we get over that hurdle, boom. Mm -hmm. there's going to be a mm -hmm. Well, then we'll be talking about an engine or something. <laughs> okay. okay. That's all I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. for, for the fire fund. Dan, Rhodes, um, cemetery. cemetery. We had a burial today in the Oak Grove area for Nicole Hawk, her husband. Mm -hmm. That was her day and uh, today. Mm -hmm. Very back corner. We chose a 750 spot next to a tree. Mm -hmm. Two, they bought two. Mm -hmm. Went nicely. Next to a tree, but not a tree. Not a tree. That's what you said. Next to it. So. Okay. But yeah, it went pretty nice. You found it okay? And yep, no problem. Plenty of space. It's plenty 18. of space there, right? Yeah. The 5 by 10 gives you a lot of room to move. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> a little room on the top and the bottom, being 10, because the grave's 8 foot. So, but there's room for headstones. Manage. What's eight foot? So usually the grave. Well, but these are ten. And they're ten, so it leaves me a little room on the top. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah we're, we're good. We're no, good. All right. Just want to make sure. Yeah, it's going to work out mine. Mm -hmm. uh, got an ashes coming up this Saturday in Clifton, which I'll be doing because Brandon will be going for Friday, He's going away for the weekend. Mm -hmm. So I'll take care of it. And then uh, we're going to work on bases starting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Hope we can get them all in by. You Next said you had a bunch of them? Eleven or something? Fourteen. Fourteen? Jeez. And, uh, what yeah. are bases? Foundations for headstones. Oh. Yeah, and then like five or six came in last week. Kind of past our cutoff, but we got yeah. them, so we'll get them. We'll manage. Do people have headstones in the Oak Grove? I know that's... Separate. They will. They, they will. can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They can Just actually have as a, any same, other cemetery. Same as, um, mm -hmm. Any other cemetery? Yeah. Not, not the same as the, the not prairie. Not as the prairie. Yeah. No, oh, you actually be allowed to have a. a oh, okay. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's what's up with the cemetery. Okay. Do you have anything for cemetery? Oh, we've got a columbarium on the 26th. We'll place someone in the columbarium. Did Johnson? You, did you order the. I'm getting at. Did you order the the door, what the plate, whatever the thing's called, for the. For the interment we have in the columbarium now? Well, I used one of the spares. But did we order one? Did the customer order one? They're going to have it engraved? They're going to have it engraved, but. Through us. Through us. But they have not yet. You're right. Okay. And we'll give, them to jump, we'll give them to Dodd and they'll take care of them. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you'll call them, or whatever the system, okay. is it Jackie? Jake, uh, Jamie. Change, whatever. So we'll have that one, and then we'll have this one for Johnson coming up. Mm -hmm. have to be done. And he gets a medallion too, which will be glued to it. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to rough that up, try to rough up the shop. I'm not going to drill it. Right. I'm afraid to break it. So, yeah. But I think if I rough that, like outline it and then rough that up, the epoxy would give it something Yeah, I too. think so. So yeah. that's what we're going to try. Okay. So, so that's what we have for cemetery. Okay. About roads. Roads, um, let's see, I told you Brandon's going to be off. I'm going to be going the 26th and 27th, little trip before mine. Mm -hmm. so, that's something that's been in the works for a while. So. Yeah. Wow. And uh, any bids on the truck yet? Um, that reminds me, you don't have to worry about dump truck for gut bids or, or whoever the deal Good. is. Yeah. Because that's... We yeah, put, it, we put it back in Yellow Springs News, mm -hmm. and uh, nothing, no, I mean, it's only been a couple of days. The, well, okay, the three or four people that have inquired, I said, it would be in the paper. I told them to buy a paper, and they find out the info there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I told them about it, but I didn't, I just said, you have to submit the bid. I didn't yeah. tell them what the bid or anything. Well, we've got till November 6th, so there's okay. plenty of time. So there are four people interested, it's just okay. whichever just one gets here first. Okay. You tell them to sign? No, yeah. And uh, I'd like to burn the stick, maybe. Sometimes. I'll let you know. Uh, you're under burn band. We're under burn band. Good one. 
put that in the hold off and oh. you, but uh, let me double check. I forget off top. Man. Okay, then I'll put that on hold. I'll let, I'll let you know. Just wanted to ask. Yeah. I can't speak to anything else. Oh, that was Rose. That was Rose. That was Rose. Okay. Anybody else have anything more for Rose, Chris, or Don? No. Oh, okay. I don't. See. All right. We were on fiscal officer report. She has for us an amendment of permanent appropriations. To entertain a motion for resolution 2023-42, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriation. General fund, increased by 600. Road and bridge, um, the repairs and maintenance, by increased by 2,400. Fire levy fund, um, the liability insurance line to increase by $536. I so move. I'll second and we'll open it up to discussion because I feel some discussion coming. Well, without the fiscal officer, there really is no discussion because I have no idea why she's putting money into 323. Unless to cover the big... Um, I mean, I realize there's nothing in there, but I didn't see anything. Maybe she's just adding for, to be sure. I don't know. Okay. But that's, that's fine. I'm, she's, I'm sure she's ahead of, ahead of the game. But May we vote? Unless you can work. Uh, one question. Mark and I are suffering from the same memory uh, problems, but for the life of me, I could have swore we had a resolution 2023-42 at our last meeting. Now, I realize we don't have minutes, but maybe if we, if we find that there is a 42, we may have to change that in our next meeting. Okay. So that's all. Well, the, <coughs> the words are the same, so. Question mark? Just the numbers change. Okay, I'll check that out then. So I would move for approval. And I seconded so. Um, let us vote. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Moyer? Yes. I'll sign that right now. Um, okay, anything else for the fiscal officer who's not here? Um, zoning inspector is not this week. Standing committees, MBRPC general meeting, I have no report. Green County Regional Planning? Um, I have a very brief report. It was just a, it was a, it was an extremely brief normal meeting. We discussed two uh, plats that were uh, being subdivided and uh, basically one hour every way in less than 15 minutes. It was a short meeting. Okay. And that's all. Clifton Union Cemetery. We have not had a meeting. And likewise, YS Development Corporation. We have had at our last meeting. Uh, well, the main thing is not so much at our last meeting, but the end of November. Uh, YSDC uh, made reference to this before, received a grant mm -hmm. to uh, examine possibilities of community solar in the township. And that can be defined a couple different ways, but it's, it's smaller installations of solar power. Um, and there was a sort of opening public meeting, inviting reactions uh, to the sort of timeline and subjects uh, of community solar. And if things go well, it's, we would be in line for another $200,000 
grant to start planning specific uh, installations and would then be in line for helping pay for uh, an installation or a combination of small installations. But that's a couple years away. Marilyn, you were at that public meeting. Did you have any? No, I think people are just finding out what community solar is. And it's it'd be like a subscription. It's it's I gave the example one type is like maybe you would you want to have solar but you have trees in your yard and you can't. So it'd give you a chance to to buy into a place in an open field. So you would actually it's almost like shareholders buy shares and you, you read sort of the, like the net benefit. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but my understanding is that the the final grant uh, would be subsidizing, that is if we got on the grant, uh, would be available to subsidize more than just co-op owned solar. Yeah, and they're talking about on the, what I got from the, on, on the um, size, the um, level of like five megawatts, five, 10 megawatts. Well, there's quite a difference between five and ten, but yeah, rather than 175. Right. That'd be, I forget what that'd be, but how many acres that would be? Might, it might. It, if 50 acres is 300, if 50 watt megawatts is 300, I guess it'd be about 30, 30 acres. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. How many people were in attendance, roughly? Uh, it was a little over 20. Yeah. Uh, Including the nice young man who founded Yellow Springs Solar, Village Solar, who I was very impressed with. And he's probably 40 or something, but I call him a nice young man. He doesn't look 40. What? He doesn't look 40. Yeah, there are a lot of That's all enthusiastic, for knowledgeable people there. So. Environmental yeah. Commission. Oh, go, yeah. go ahead. Anything else from YS development? No. I know they had a meeting as well, but um, Environmental Commission, they were, um, I don't have anything really to report. They're, they're on, they have ongoing things going on with um, Ellis Pond and um, community gardens and things. I'm just there to report back. Um, Oh, they, they, would, they, are, they do plan to start a prairie out. What's, that, what's the name of that park where the YS, where the community garden is, and it says Yellow Springs in big clay letters? Bill Duncan? Bill Duncan. Bill Duncan. I think Duncan. Triangle Park. Yeah, I think they're, they're, they're planning a, a small prairie on one end of Bill Duncan. Yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah. Those parks are named after people, I get them confused, but yeah. So I thought that was interesting. They're going to take up some turf and put in prairie. Um, Environmental Commission, Green County Township Association. I didn't go this month, so I have no report on I that. I didn't either. Um, it was, yeah. And the Green County, the, the, the Natural Burial Committee, um, we met and we talked about a lot of things that we don't need to talk to about tonight, but we really like in the spring. You notice the, the southwest corner, I think you called it a mess or you called it tr trouble or troubles of brewing, but we we would love to do um, what we're starting to call a do-over, which is which the person from the ODNR parks guy, prairie guy, said mow it down, put down plastic, bake it for I forget how much time in the spring, and then take our take our prairie and, and do a replant or. Is that what you had in mind? I know that area is it's being encroached upon by them. The things on that side, it's it's a little micro climate over there. I hadn't gotten to the point of, of, of how to uh, repair it. Okay, so we think we got away. Well, but that's it can't be done to spring, and we haven't even got to winter yet. So that's what we talked about. Um, Anything else for standing committees? Did I forget anybody? 
And if you have your... Nope. Any business going on? Okay, new business. I wanted to um, let you know that the day after, um, I already told Chris this, the day after Jennifer Adams contacted me to ask if we had any contact with Vesper Energy, I think it was the day after, maybe it was two, they were in town, they visited with the Cedarville trustees and then called me the following day to announce that they are going to, they plan to apply for a new permit for a smaller footprint, um, solar development in the same area, which shall be named Aviation. That is, will be its name. Aviation? Avi aviation Solar Development. As in aviation, as in flying. As in the Wright Brothers Aviation Solar Development. So this was verbal, not, not an email. This is verbal and, and, this, and they, well, they presented it to the Cedarville and, that's, and they, they are going to be launching it soon on their website. And I don't know how this interacts with their appeal. I think that question was asked at the Cedarville meeting. If you somehow win your appeal, or, or you throw this out the window and just go with the original or not, and they have an answer and I can't remember what it is. Mm -hmm. I think they still want to be good neighbors and I, they, they feel like with this one, they've, been res they, they've heard people and they are being, um, sensitive to you know what the complaints that they've heard and setbacks and relieving the people who had um, the, the development on more, more than one side of their property, things like that. But I don't, I ask if they know exactly where the new one would be planned and they so said they don't have that mapped out yet. Who was it an employee of Vesper, or was it a lobbyist? Her name or? is Lindsay something. No, she's an employee. She's the community outreach coordinator or something yeah. like that. And her, her, then, then there's an engineer that travels with her. And so there was no correspondence that I missed on this? No. Okay. They called me, they had my number for when I did their tour of the Nestlewood. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so that's, I, I, I'll, I'll let Jennifer know just because she she wants to know when we have contact with them. So I don't know, they might come present to us. I don't know. That's all. And um, the next one, I didn't know if you were joking when this when you asked me to. <laughs> I never joke. Okay. No. no. In hearing and taking part in conversations about upcoming levies, and hearing um, people complain about that giant firehouse we have, I thought, I wonder how much I pay for um, the firehouse every year. So I, having been taught new tools by the auditor at these public meetings, I went and looked and I personally paid $39 for the whole of 2022 for the firehouse. You're a big spender. $39. So is and, that um, on your one property or two properties? One property, $39. Not a month, a year. A year. Okay. And um, so I thought, that's weird. And it said, we're paying at one mil. And I looked up an old article, because I wasn't here when you passed that. And it was a 2.4 mil levy. Mm -hmm. And it's collecting now at one mil. So I called David Graham, and he said, that's true. And um, it's because we got lucky. And part of the reasons we got lucky because we, we locked in at a certain, for our levy purposes, we locked in at a projected interest rate. And when the time came to borrow, we caught the market at just the right time and got a good, and then we over-report, like our, our, our first bit of time was an over-report because of that. And then we'd get the money, level it back out for the people. So, but right now it's collecting at one mill only, and he can't guarantee it will stay that way, but it, it is looking good, so. Chris wanted me to report that, so. Um, I, I think that's, I think that's I think it's really relevant because there's this, there's this conception that we, uh, it, that we're paying a whole bunch of money for right. this building and we're actually, I, it, it must be, at this point, it's probably, I'm um, to calculate, it must be about like 33 
for every hundred thousand dollars of a value of um, appraisal value um, per year. So. Well, thanks for that. The news isn't here to report our um, our good deeds, but yeah. um, that's okay. We know. We do. Um, We're happy. The fire and EMS levy, on the other hand, <laughs> I paid one hundred thirty-nine dollars last year, but I happily pay that. Um, old business. How about huh? anybody here having more new business? Oh. Well, that's why I said I'll call for um, agenda. I know, I know. But that's okay. You're always welcome to bring up new business. Uh, I, would, I would like to uh, uh, have an executive session uh, brief for purposes of uh, real estate acquisition. Could, could we move that till after old business? We could. Are we going to do Do you deep? think we are going, to, do you anticipate a, a vote after the? I do not. I'm, I'm just trying to, for the convenience of other people. And for the life of my battery and my camera. Okay. Well, it was under, oh, yeah, we could have it was new, it. not old, so I just had, okay. just felt like I so should be. We'll move an executive session. Right. Uh, so could we talk about, I have a Kingwood item to bring up before we go into executive session. Oh, that's right. Uh, the, the power siding board has, and essentially they've confirmed that they reject uh, Kingwood's application, the, the proposal that we've been talking about for a couple of years. Uh, and Kingwood has appealed again to the Supreme Court. Uh, and Citizens for Green Acres is doing a counter appeal as happened in April. And Xenia Township and Cedarville Township have, as happened in April, voted to join sort of as co-signers with Citizens for Green Acres attorney doing the, it's essentially the same document as in April. Uh, I would like us to uh, do that also. I, I move that we join with the Citizen for Green Acres in their reappeal. I'll say that. Hearing a motion in a second. Do we have any further discussion? No, I. Only that it's the same substance, the same content as we supported in April. Yeah, I just want clarity. They've appealed to the Supreme Court. We're not the, <clears throat> I don't know if there's defendants and plaintiffs, so we're not. They've appealed, it's between them and the OSPB, the Ohio Siding Board, and we're kind of like a, a side. Yes and no. What they, <clears throat> like if, if, if they, let's the say, let's just say the Green board. Acres wasn't part of it, would it still go on? If none of these Green Acres and townships were participating, would there still be this appeal going? Well, th that's probably too complicated. Because uh, the, it, would, it would only be going, but this <sighs> Vesper, Kingwood, mm -hmm. is appealing the power siding board's rejection and the rejection was based on the overwhelming community opposition and, and formal local government opposition. Uh, Citizens for Green Acres is appealing because they feel the power siding board should have turned it down for environmental reasons in addition to the community opposition. 
And so that's what we're exiting to. That's what we're going along with. Okay. May we vote? If unless there's further discussion. No. Do we vote? Yes, we vote. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Moyer? I'm going to abstain. Okay. Okay. So it passes two to one, or two, right. two to zero with one abstention. Yeah, and um, I love democracy. I um, agree. No argument. Don, do you love democracy? Yes. <laughs> um, Dan? I, yes. Okay. <laughs> at this Dan, point, no, no, we no. will be adjourned <laughs> to executive session. No. Need a move? I will move that we adjourn to executive session. I second. For purposes of real estate acquisition. And <clears throat> being this being a democratic body, thank you for your motion and your second. And um, do we have to vote? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Hollister. That's yes. That's a democratic way. <laughs> Mr. Meacher. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Yeah, the same for that one.